The U.S. needs more power. We are witnessing a global AI race, and the bottleneck is not compute. It's electricity. AI data centers use a massive amount of it, roughly 580 terawatt hours last year, and I don't think most people realize how much that is. A terawatt hour is the equivalent of a trillion watt hours of electricity, enough electricity to power every house in America for about an hour, okay? And again, that's one terawatt hour. Right now, AI data centers are using 580 of them a year. And that figure is expected to double to 1,230 kilowatt hours by 2028. It's already doubled since 2023. This means data center electricity demand will have tripled in just five years. Data center energy consumption is already up to a record 5% of total U.S. power demand. By 2030, a full 12% of every watt of American power will be used to feed these AI machines. So energy will be the biggest constraint on AI growth. Now, by the way, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and click the link in my bio for the $5 annual Black Ops subscription, where you'll get weekly live mentoring sessions, my weekly newsletter, and a ton of other stuff. Now, you see, energy isn't just a constraint. It is the gatekeeper. Compute scales fast. Power doesn't. You've got permitting. You have grids, cooling, land, politics, and they all move slower than silicon. And this forces trade-offs. Model efficiency over brute force. Geography over pure latency. Energy contracts over chip access. You see, the winner won't be whoever trains the biggest or smartest model. It'll be whoever secures reliable power first. AI is not capped by ideas. It is capped by electrons, and the data supports this. This graphic shows where AI investment actually went in 2025. And if you'd asked me to guess, I would have said 80 plus percent of the money went to the top three or five labs. You know, your OpenAI, Anthropic, XAI, the, the, the big model builders. But that's not what happened. The total AI funding in 2025 globally was $222 billion. And here's the breakdown. OpenAI got $41 billion. Anthropic, $17.5. The total for the top five, including XAI and Scale and Stargate, around $84 billion. But the rest of AI, $144 billion. So the top five only got about 38%, while the rest of the space got 62% of those dollars. And this surprises people. Because the majority of capital isn't going to frontier labs, but to infrastructure, tooling, vertical applications, and of course, power. The entire stack around AI. AI is rewriting the power equation. Data centers doubling their consumption. So going from 580 to 1,230 terawatt hours, that's the equivalent of adding Japan's entire electricity load overnight. Morgan Stanley says AI clusters are driving the sharpest demand surge in decades. They project a potential power shortfall in the U.S. in as little as two years. And look, everyone knows we're seeing huge capex in the AI space. That's where all the big spending is going. It's driving this GDP growth. Most estimates put it between 2 and $3 trillion invested into AI infrastructure in the five-year period ending in 2027. And a big chunk of that is and will continue to go toward generating more power. Because big tech is desperate. And they are throwing the kitchen sink at the problem. Natural gas, nuclear, solar, nothing is off the table. And the stock market is already pricing it in. While everyone was watching NVIDIA last year hoping for another rally... The clean energy sector soared more than 50%. Bloom Energy, ticker BE, is developing solid oxide fuel cells that convert natural gas and hydrogen into clean, reliable, on-site electricity for data centers. The stock is up 500% in the last 12 months. Now, if you work in the clean energy sector, you're an engineer building this stuff, I would love to hear your feedback, genuinely, because I am not even smart enough to understand a lot of this technology. So my approach has been this. I just bought them all. Ticker ICLN is the iShares Global Clean Energy ETF. At the time of this recording, it tailed 128 stocks, all with exposure to clean energy. So that's everything from wind to solar to nuclear and all the companies that make all that stuff work. 
Their 10 largest holdings are listed here. You could also buy a more specialized ETF like NLR, the Vanek Uranium and Nuclear ETF, or TAN, TAN, the Invesco Solar one. Now, these take a more concentrated positions into either solar or nuclear stocks. TAN, for example, holds just 40 stocks, and most of those dollars go to the top 20. Now, I own all three of these in my retirement account, NL, uh, NLR, TAN, and iClean. In fact, I allocated a full 25% of my retirement dollars to energy. Now, if you want the full breakdown, watch this video where I break it all down. I give you the percentages, the tickers, and my rationale behind each one. But look, make no mistake, some of these stocks in these ETFs will climb several hundred, even thousand percent. The next NVIDIA is not a chips company. It's going to be the company with the best solution to the energy bottleneck. Now, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the link below for my $5 YouTube special. We are still offering that, just 5 bucks for an entire year of my Black Ops trading service. You'll get live weekly mentoring sessions with me every week for a year, my weekly newsletter, indicators, picks, access to our staff, and a ton of, bunch of other stuff. Huge deal. So click that link, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.